Hey, how's it going guys? Um, thanks for tuning in today. This video is going to be for anyone that's about to get the Lisa Strike or Lisa Strike Pro and obviously all you owners out there. Hopefully you haven't had the kit for too long because some of this stuff I really feel like you should be doing before you even hit a pad. Um, and I want to get right into it. So the first thing that I feel like you should do right out of the box, as soon as you open each one of your pads, um, you should take the head off and put a couple strips of tape. I used clear packing tape, but you just kind of cut strips and you put it in between the, the two foam columns in the center plate. So you want to do, you know, one going down the vertically and then horizontally and they'll crisscross and I would say two layers. I mean, I guess one layer would be enough, but if you're doing it, you know. And the other thing is with the wire, you want to get like a small screwdriver or maybe a pocket knife and slide it next to that wire because you want to free it and it's um, from the factory it's kind of glued there but it's a little bit too tight and you just want to um, free the wire from the foam and the outside uh, you know the plate that it's glued to just so it has a little bit of slack to move around um, you know otherwise you can it can risk snapping and you don't want that your pad will break <laughs> so definitely do that before you even hit these pads now the second thing you want to do is update the module. You're going to need a USB cable, like a regular printer cable. Unfortunately, at least this doesn't include this in the kit. I don't know why, but I mean, if you have any kind of printer for your computer, um, these cables are pretty common. So one end looks like a house that goes into the the module and the other end goes to the computer. And uh, yeah, you just Google Elisa Strike update and, um, you know, it'll bring you to the site. And, you know, it's a free update. So, you know, why not? <laughs> it's going to help your module perform the best and have the most recent trigger settings and firmware and all that stuff. So the third thing is the bass drum setup. Um, when you take your bass drum pad out, you want to make sure that the legs are faced like outward as far as possible. Um, and because I don't know, some people don't do that. And like, imagine if, you know, somebody's trying to get in a door and you, and you want to hold the door, right? You're not going to stand straight up behind the door. You're going to, you're going to keep your feet like farther away and lean with your shoulders against the door. You know, that's pretty much what the leg is doing. You want that to be as far an angle out. So the bass drum pad doesn't bounce at all. Um, because you know, if it, if it does bounce, you're going to have to try to dial out re-triggering and threshold and mess with the settings more than you should have to. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to have those angles facing out. The second thing is with the bass drum, there's a little uh, rubber pad that in the directions, it does tell you to put it underneath. And some people don't look at the directions and you put it on top or you throw it away. You think it's what the hell is that, you know, <laughs> but um, you definitely want to put that underneath the metal uh piece that's like uh, mimicking like a bass drum hoop where your pedal hooks onto put that on the bottom side and um, your pedal should grip on the right way because if you don't you put it on top you can start to bend it upward like um what happened to this guy's number four is very important to me and it should be to anybody that plays or plans to play an acoustic drum set and that is drum and cymbal placements um, a lot of people get e kits, and because the shell depths and the you know the sizes, I guess mainly the kick size isn't the same, so they end up setting it up in a way that's completely un unrealistic. So what I would recommend is getting your measuring tape, and when you're setting up your kit, start with the bass drum and measure up from there, 30 inches, uh, 22 inches for you know an acoustic kick drum height and then 8 inches for the regular shell tom depth. And make sure that the front rims of your toms don't go any lower than that because they physically wouldn't be able to on an acoustic kit. Number five is trigger settings. Now, hopefully you've done the update on the module and everything, and the kit should play you know pretty good and everything, but I really recommend going in and just fine-tuning the, the settings, you know, because um, you, you don't want to get any machine gunning, especially if you guys are playing out live or going to record with this kit. You do not want machine gunning. And it's really easy uh, to avoid that in the strike because it has a nice, you know, round robin algorithm to avoid that. But you can still get it if you're too sensitive. So all you have to do on the strike module is hit the triggers button and it brings you into the triggers settings menu. And you go through each of your pads and make sure 
that your soft hit sounds soft and the loud hit sounds loud and you don't get machine gunning. And you want to do that with every pad. And I know it sounds tedious, but it is well worth the time, guys. And just remember to hit save once you have everything dialed in while you're in the trigger settings menu. Otherwise, it won't save. It doesn't save like with the other, you know, when you're making a kit or something. So that's just one thing, you know, don't forget to do that. Otherwise, it'll reset when you turn the module off. So just a few quick notes before I close out this video. Um, you know, if you guys just got your strike and you don't know about my custom kits, you know, please go and download those. You know, they're a great starting point to start tweaking your own kits from. Um, you know, just go to my videos and search for the video titled Elisa Strike for free custom kits. And you can download, there's a link, and you put those into the kits folder of your SD card and you can try those out. And, you know, it's just a great starting point. And lastly, if you guys are on Facebook, um, I highly recommend joining our group for the strike. Um, it's just called Strike Pro Owners Group. And, you know, you can share your pictures and videos and, of course, ask any questions. It's just a great community, like a lot of, uh, a lot of good people in there. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon.